Documenting the Near Future, Critical Thinking with Jason Leggett. Coming to an understanding of why a gap exists between law as an ideal and law as we really experience it in reality requires abstract thought. Consider the Greek word pathos, or more commonly known, sympathy. One way of understanding this abstract thought is that whatever affects one affects the other. So if you think about it, no one really wants to be locked away in a cell. This is something that we can all understand. When we think, we form an intention in the mind. This allows us to do two very fundamental things to our everyday life as it relates to other human beings. The first is to make promises, things we intend to do in the future. This again is an abstract thought. It isn't something that is, we are experiencing in the moment. It's something that we have to think about and make an intention to do in the future. The other is the capacity to forgive. In other words, we have to form an abstract thought to understand, perhaps, why someone may have hurt us, caused us injury, or otherwise requires our forgiveness. Again, in the immediate experience, we may feel very angry. We may even want to be violent or hurt the person. But again, the capacity to forgive, even among children, shows that we have the ability to form an abstract thought. When people have thought about these two ideas, promises and forgiveness, they usually refer to the uncertainty involved in life, including death. This is obviously something that is common to all of us. We're all going to die. This is, of course, an abstract thought. We don't experience death. We may experience near death, and certainly that makes abstract thinking or critical thinking about death a lot easier. However, you may also think about an abstract concept such as birth. Nearly none of us remember our birth, and I, I wonder if anyone ever does. But we all know we were born, and we all know that other people were born. Again, we don't experience birth in any way that we think about making sense of the world now. But we know that everyone experiences birth. Certainly if you've ever given birth or seen someone give birth, or even seen it on TV or, or movies, then you understand this abstract concept pretty concretely. However, the capacity to both understand death and birth shows that we understand another abstract concept, newness or starting something new. These binds require more than our own experience to bring meaning. This means we have something like a code of conduct, norms, or the law. Critical thinking about law, then, provides some stability, some predictability. It lets us consider new ideas this is what critical thinking is really about. When we analyze a situation, in other words, we look at a bunch of information about maybe why certain people are imprisoned and other people are not, we are doing critical thinking. When we read a book about the criminal justice system or law or politics, we don't know all of the information most importantly, we don't know why a president behaves the way they do. We can infer why they do, perhaps because they've been rich and spoiled and haven't lived a very life that most of us have experienced. When we do that over time, among many different things, like if we look at three or four presidents or five or six judges or we know seven or eight police officers, we're now synthesizing that information. When we hear about a specific event, 
we can apply the information that we've gathered through our own experience, through books and, and other sources of information, and we can apply those to new, to new sources of information, like whether we read a newspaper uh, or whether we uh, watch a movie and we say, oh, I understand because I've seen this before. As you can see, there are many other ways of conducting critical thinking. We evaluate things every day. We often make comparisons and contrast things to show how they're similar and how they're different. More and more, we need to verify information as digital technology provides lots of sources of information, but it's becoming more and more difficult to determine which is valid information. We substantiate information. We explain information, and we have the ability to hypothesize about new things, things that might be beyond our own experience. This is how from the past and present, we can, so to speak, see or map the near future. In other words, we can take information from the past, we can take our experiences even in the present moment, and we can make predictions about how people are going to behave or how situations are going to unfold in our near future. Certainly, we can't predict 10, 20, 30 years, you know, just as IBM was supposed to take over the world in computing, and then came a company called Apple, and then Facebook, right? We never know what big events will happen far down the road, but we have a pretty good idea based on accumulation of data and information what is likely or what's more probable to occur in the immediate present or the immediate future. When people think about critical thinking then, we often have to differentiate or, or make a contrast to making sense. So if we go back to sympathy, when a loved one or someone we care about is going through an experience that we've also been through, we can make sense of that experience in our minds. We can think about times when we were sad or times when something bad happened to us. Certainly, feelings of love, of joy, of affection, these are things that help us make sense of the world and people around us. We don't really have to think too much about it. These things kind of come natural. They click. There's things that just make sense to us, is the phrase you often hear. This is very different than critical thinking. Critical thinking requires you to look at things from multiple points of view. It means that you may not have experienced the same thing that someone else has experienced, but you can still make an abstract concept. You can think about it in your head, and you can understand what that person must be going through, is what many people usually say. This then kind of allows us to make predictions about how people will feel if we do a certain thing to them, or if a situation arises, we can understand what they're going through. This is the difference of critical thinking. It probably won't make sense to you at first. It probably won't be based on your experience. You'll have to do some more research. You'll have to do some more thinking. You might have to seek out new information oftentimes alternative points of view and things that contradict things that you previously made sense of the world through or about. Finally, when we think about abstract thinking and critical thinking, we want to think about our processes. How do we document our existence? As you see, this can be done in many ways. But most importantly, we want to think about how that process can help us understand the future how it can allow us to look at other people's experiences. We want to avoid generalizing, or most more specifically, overgeneralizing. We want to think beyond, oh, my uncle said this, or my other teacher said this, or I read this once. We need to see multiple forms of opinions, multiple forms of information. Then we can start engaging in critical thinking.